So seitan is praised by many vegans, but seitan is 100% vital wheat gluten. It's gluten, folks. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Gut Instincts. I'm your host, Dr. Stephen Gundry, and I'm excited to embark on a culinary adventure with you today. Whether you're a carnivore, a plant-based enthusiast, or somewhere in between, the choices you make for your protein intake can have a significant impact on your gut health. Today, we'll be ranking different protein sources and meat alternatives to help you make informed decisions that align with a lectin-free lifestyle. I'll be ranking everyday food from S to F. S stands for superfood, and F means it belongs in the trash. But before we jump in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up if you're ready to boost your gut health along with me. Let's dive in. Boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Folks, nobody ever ate a boneless, skinless chicken breast 50 years ago. They really did not exist. They certainly didn't exist 100 years ago. Most of our chicken has been fed corn and soybeans, even if it says organic. And most of the fats that you're going to find in boneless, skinless chicken breasts are omega-6 inflammatory fats. So don't be fooled. Believe it or not, probably the healthiest part of the chicken breast was thrown away, and that was the skin. Please, please, please don't let me see you eating boneless, skinless chicken breast. If that's all you can find, it's the D category. Well, how about turkey breast? Same sort of problem. This one you're going to find usually in the deli section. And quite frankly, most deli foods, even turkey breasts, are sources of gluten that you may not know exist. If you can find pastured turkey, or for that matter, pastured chicken breast, you're right up there. So. I'm going to put that in the D category as well. Well, what about beef? The problem with beef is the same problem. Most of our cows are fed corn and soybeans. Cows are designed to eat grass. So many companies get around a rule that says if you feed your cows on grass for any part of their life, they can be called grass-fed even if they spend most of their time being fattened up in a feedlot. So, buyer beware. I'm not a big fan even of grass-fed, grass-finished beef because of a sugar molecule they contain called NU5GC. But when you have it every now and then, it jumps above these guys into a B. Same with pork. Pork contains the same sugar molecule as beef and lamb. And this sugar molecule wreaks havoc on our blood vessels, our brain, our joints, and has even been tied to increasing risk of cancer. I have no dog in this fight. I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska. I grew up on beef and pork. Same thing applies to pork as applies to beef and chicken. They're fed corn and soybeans. They're down here. Sorry about that. Okay, you're going, well, I'm going to over to the fish aisle. And the first thing you see is Atlantic salmon. Now, truth be told, there is such a species as Atlantic salmon. But almost all salmon sold in the United States is farm-raised Atlantic salmon. And rather than swimming around eating what they're supposed to eat, algae and other small fish, these guys are fed grain product, and the color doesn't come from the food they're eating, like normal salmon eat krill. The color is coming off a color chart of dyes that gives them that appealing color. Farm-raised salmon has much stronger white stripes than wild salmon. So if you see farm-raised salmon, F, please don't eat it. 
You can get wild salmon, readily available frozen. All Alaskan salmon by law has to be wild caught. Beware if it says caught in northern waters or beware if it says organic salmon. No one followed that fish around to see if it was eating organically. That means it was farm raised and that means it was fed soybeans and corn. The last thing you want to eat. Okay, how about tuna? Now, a lot of you are aware that sushi-grade tuna is an upper-level predator and concentrates mercury from the small fish it eats. On the other hand, light tuna in a can is usually very low in mercury because the fish are quite small and they've not had a chance to acquire that much mercury. Some brands will even say, on the label, very low or no mercury. It's cheap, it's easy, and it won't contaminate you. So that actually is a superfood. How about shellfish? Shellfish are actually a superfood if you're not allergic to them. Shellfish have a very interesting collection of fats that are called phospholipids and plasmalogens. And shellfish, like an oyster, for instance, if it's eaten in proper times of the year, can be actually a really good food. So I'm gonna put shellfish in an A. Now shrimp, everybody sees shrimp and shrimp are ubiquitous, but the vast majority of shrimp are farm raised and the same problems occur. Not only are they fed the wrong diet, but most farm raised shrimp are actually given antibiotics. What you're looking for is wild shrimp. If you don't see the word wild, it's way down there on the F. If you see the word wild, and it's, it's possible to find, it's an A. So just the word wild can take something from a F to an A. Well, what about deli meats? Traditionally fermented sausages are good for you, but deli meats in the United States are not prepared in that way. So that salami with an Italian sounding name or even turkey breast, that's not good for you. They contain gluten and they contain a lot of nasty compounds. Please, please, please stay away from these. And what are you going to eat these on? Well, you're going to eat them on a piece of bread or a sub sandwich. And every time you eat that sub, you're going to sink just like a sub. How about eggs? Now, eggs, some of my patients with autoimmune disease clearly react to both the whites and yolks of eggs, but most do not. So if you get pastured eggs or omega-3 eggs where the chickens are fed flax seeds and or algae, you're gonna get actually a really good source of protein and you're gonna get a good source of omega-3 fats. But buyer beware, the color means nothing. Make sure you see either the word pastured and soy free or get the omega-3 eggs fed flax seeds and or algae. And it is a really good food for most people. Tofu, everybody eats tofu over in Asia. Not, tofu is not a fermented product like many people are led to believe. It's soybeans and tofu contains some really nasty lectins from soy. It's an F. Now here's one you hear a lot about and I take care of lots of vegans and vegetarians. So seitan is praised by many vegans, but seitan is 100% vital wheat gluten. It's gluten, folks. Gluten is the major cause of intestinal leaking in my patients that we test for. It's an F, don't come near it. But isn't there a safe soy? Yes, there is. Tempeh. Tempeh is soy that has been fermented, just like miso is a fermented soy. Fermentation is nature's way of ridding 
soy or anything else of the lectins. So tempeh, particularly tempeh, that's pure soy tempeh rather than grain-based tempehs that we see mixed in, is actually a really good health food. Well, since we're on plant meats, how about the Impossible Burger or cousins of that? You see this everywhere, but you got to realize that most of these are made from either soy or pea proteins, along with some fairly nasty omega-6 oils. And most of these contain Roundup, glyphosate, and that's not what you want. Many people say, well, but this is a plant-based food. Anytime you process a plant-based food, it's no longer a natural whole food. It's just as processed as all the other foods that you are trying to avoid. So it's an F. Please, please, please stay away from this stuff. Now, is there a plant-based food that I'm fond of? And yes, there is. It's called corn. Q-U-O-R-N. When people hear me speak, they say, Dr. Gundry recommends corn, C-O-R-N. No, it's Q-U-O-R-N. This is basically made from mushroom roots, mycelia. There's a little bit of egg white, but you gotta be careful. Most of the corn products are breaded or have gluten, but meatless pieces is a safe one and grounds is a safe one. It's way up on the top of my list as a great alternative for my vegetarian patients or for people who want a lectin-free lifestyle. Next up, mushrooms. Now, I'm showing you a picture of white button mushrooms. I am not a fan because I have large numbers of patients who react and are sensitive to the white button mushroom if they're raw. On the other hand, cooking a white button mushroom or using any other kind of mushroom, even a brown mushroom, a shiitake mushroom, a reshi mushroom, makes them really a superfood. So be careful, mushrooms are a superfood as long as you don't buy the white mushrooms and eat them raw. Cooking them is just fine. Vegetarians and vegans go, what about beans? Beans are a superfood. All the great blue zones eat beans. Number one, not all the blue zones eat beans. Number two, you gotta know if the bean has been detoxified. Beans are one of the strongest sources of lectins and mischief-making lectins that you can find. If you pressure cook beans, the lectin is destroyed. At the moment in this country, there are only two brands of pressure cooked beans. One is Eden brand, E-D-E-N. The other is Jovial from Italy. Otherwise, please, please, please stay away from beans. Finally, chickpeas. Chickpeas are another one that you see on salad bars that are made into hummus. Same thing applies to chickpeas. If you pressure cook chickpeas like Eden does, like Jovial does, use them. I eat beans and chickpeas several times a week that are pressure cooked. I eat beans over in Italy that have been fermented for several days before they're cooked, breaking down the lectins. But please beware of those chickpeas and be careful about hummus. I can't tell you the number of my patients with an autoimmune disease that think hummus is a safe food. And when we take it away from them or have them make their own hummus from pressure cooked chickpeas, they thrive. But for now, plain old chickpeas, it's gotta go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my gut instinct. I hope you had fun here today. Now, please don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below. Hey, which proteins are your favorites? Let me know. If you found this episode valuable, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more gut instincts. I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'll see you in the next video.